Ciao ragazzi, bentornati alla lezione. Um, welcome back to the lesson. So we were looking at vocab connected to friendship, amicizia. Ok, allora ci sono dieci frasi, um, ten phrases. See if you can remember what any of them were, first of all. This is what we looked at in the previous lesson. So in terms of pronunciation, we have completi, interessi, comuni, geloso, which could also be gelosa, remember if it was feminine, gentili, uh, gentile, segreti, bugie, gusti simili, egoista, felice, ascoltare. Ok? Ok, allora, un esercizio per voi. Completa gli spazi vuoti. The exercise complete the gaps, gli spazi vuoti, the missing spaces. Ok, so think about what the words were. Think about what letters would go in the gaps. Pause this if you need to. If you want a bit of help, then listen to me pronounce the words once more and see if you can now fill in what the missing letters are. So, conflitti, interessi comuni, geloso, gentile, segreti, bugie, gusti simili, egoista, felice, ascoltare. Ok, those were the words with the letters replaced, allora le risposte, so have a look, see how close you were, and you'll notice that the English is now gone, ok, allora, quello che si deve fare, so the thing that you must do, deve, ok, remember deve meant must, quello che si deve fare è di scrivere l'inglese, so write the English, what you think these words mean, again, pausing if you require a bit more time. Le risposte, allora, conflitti, arguments, think of the English word conflict, ok, always look at um, finding cognates. Interessi comuni, common interests, that's one of the easier ones, as is geloso, jealous. Gentile does not mean gentle, ok, be careful with that one. Gentile and simpatico are both ways of saying kind. Segreti, secrets, bugie, lies or fibs, I think is a common translation. Gusti simili are similar tastes. Okay, the word gusti means tastes in the literal sense as well. So if you went to an ice cream shop, they would ask you che gusto, what flavor, so what taste. Egoista, selfish, think of the word ego. Okay, if you've got a big ego, you think quite a lot of yourself, you're probably quite selfish, so egoista. Felice is happy. And ascoltare, we've used since about year eight. So ascoltare la musica, for example, to listen to music. Again, see how you got on. Give yourself a mark out of 10. Coming back to that verb that we looked at earlier on. So, dovere, meaning to have to or must. So, devo, devi, deve, dobbiamo, dovete, devono. It's an irregular verb. Okay, you'll notice that, for example, here you've got dovere, but then straight away when you look at the I form of the verb, I must, it becomes de, devo, goes back to do for the noi and the voi form of the verb, but it is pretty irregular, so it's one of those you would just have to learn. To start with, you just need to be confident that you can say, I have to, devil. Okay, allora, l'amicizia, friendship. So what must a good friend be like? So we have un buon amico, okay? Un buon amico deve essere. So a good friend should be. Numero due, un buon amico non deve essere. Remember, just by putting the word non at the front of the phrase, it makes the phrase completely the opposite, so it becomes negative, so a good friend must not be. Numero tre, un buon amico non deve dire. Okay, interesting one. Dire is to say, so a good friend should not say or tell, is another word. Quattro, un buon amico deve, and then a blank, so a good friend must what? I miei problemi. Five. We go to the dobbiamo form of the verb, so we must have now, so avere is to have, we must have something and something, and finally non dobbiamo avere, we must not have something or something. Ok, allora completa le frasi con il vocabulario in blu di sotto, so filling in the phrases with the words given in blue underneath. So you're looking for each phrase to make sense, ok? So if I just give you an example for number one, a good friend must be something and something. 
I'm guessing you probably wouldn't choose the words geloso and egoista because that would translate as a good friend must be jealous and selfish. So think what would make most sense. Again, pause because it's going to take you a few minutes. You need to come up with the best possible answer for each phrase. Okay, allora le risposte. You might have different options, different choices, but some of them there's only really one thing that makes grammatical sense, okay, as well as just what means something sensible. Um, for a good friend must be, numero uno, okay, a good friend must be, um, I would go for possibly something like gentile, meaning kind, felice, meaning happy, okay, that would work. Numero due, what they must not be like, so you're looking for negative characteristics, so the ones that I gave in my initial example of what number one wouldn't be, I would have put here geloso and egoista. So a good friend must not be jealous or selfish. Un buon amico non deve dire. So number three, a good friend should not say what would make sense here. Okay, a good friend must not say bugie is the only thing that really works. So must not tell fibs. Okay. Quattro, you're looking for a verb because remember after the verb dovere, you need to have an infinitive. So the only thing that we have here, which is a verb in its infinitive, is this one, ascoltare. Okay, verbs in Italian, remember the infinitives always end in either are, ere or ire. So a good friend must listen to my problems. Numero cinque, dobbiamo avere, we must have. I would go with interessi comuni, so common interests, and gusti simili, similar tastes. And the one that's left, remember you're looking for plurals, so generally you could have been looking for things ending in I or an E. Non dobbiamo avere, we mustn't have. What about segreti and conflitti, so secrets and arguments, in either order, obviously. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Tutto chiaro, everything's clear. E per te? Okay, and what about for you? Allora, un buon amico deve essere e non deve essere. And obviously you can add opinion phrases in like secondo me, meaning in my opinion, or penso che, I think that, or per me, meaning for me. So what do you think a good friend should be like? What must they be like and what they not be like? I've put a link here to an online dictionary which we refer to all the time. It works so much better than if you just go for a Google Translate option, which tends to give you something pretty rubbish and nonsensical. So use wordreference.com if you need to look up some vocab. You can use vocab that I've provided today. So you can go back through the video and find phrases um, that work for you. But be creative, find things that you want to say rather than just the things that I've given you. You have the time, so use it. Okay, so wordreference.com, come up with phrases for what a good friend must be like and must not be like. And don't just come up with one adjective, please, for each option. After that, there's some vocab practice for you. These are all games. If you haven't yet seen educandy.com, it's a way of learning either vocab or terms and definitions. Um, lots of different subjects use it, but I don't know within Hewitt who does. But if you go to www.educandy.com, it will ask you to type in an activity code. And the one you need to put in for today's vocab is 1C35F. And the lowercase letters are important, so make sure you type it in exactly like that. And you'll see that there are lots of different options for phrases that you would need to know for the GCSE, but I haven't necessarily referenced today in this lesson. But have a look and see how you get on. Okay, altre cose. So other things. Compiti completa le traduzioni a casa. So again, this will require you to go back through the video. So go back and either copy or type out the verb dovere. Okay, the verb which means to have to or must. Um, after you've done that, write out the six phrases that are below and a translation of them into English. Again, feel free to use wordreference.com for the odd word, but it doesn't work as a translation tool for a whole phrase. You should never translate whole phrases. You should work it out word at a time. So the six phrases, they're using this verb dovere, to have to or must. Extra stuff for you if you're feeling like you've got it and you want to push yourself a little bit further. Write four similar phrases of your own, okay, using the verb dovere. And also give me an English translation of it so that um, obviously I know that you've written something that makes sense. 
The key thing here, the start point at the bottom, is that remember you always need to use a verb in the infinitive after using dovere. So your verb after something like devo, I must, needs to be something in ending in are, eri, or ire. So look at my examples. After devo here, we've got sposare, then we've got studiare, then we've got ascoltare, andare, mangiare, and here's one which is an ere verb prendere. Okay? They can be related to any to ever topic you like. It doesn't have to be connected to friendship or problems. Okay. If you've done something and you think that's particularly good, then email anything to us. We really want to see what you're doing at the moment. Um, I'm not 100% sure what you guys are all doing, so it would be nice to see some of the work that you're producing. Um, if you could email that to the generic MFL help email address, that would be great. And any feedback, please, on whether you find it helpful having a video to watch, whether you prefer to have more paper-based work, um, which, you know, I can upload worksheets for, whether you would like to have more of this kind of work, then please let me know. Um, Se pronto, meaning are you ready? And um, it says get ready to tombola. Now, you may remember that tombola in Italian means bingo. There's something coming up soon after half term, which is going to be a range of activities in a bingo style grid. Um, it's going to be competitive. So, um, Keep your eyes and ears open for that. It will be coming up after half term. Ok ragazzi, abbiamo finito. E ci vediamo la prossima lezione. Ok, all done. We'll see you next time. Grazie, ciao. Ciao, ciao.